actually was a student in this class as well. And I, I grew to like the, the idea of checking and monitoring the health status of community and gravitated to the statistical analysis feature of that. So the whole idea is to prevent the knowledge from flowing away every year. So Wiki is a very sensible choice and Tufts actually hosts their own Wiki platform which make it even easier. You could use Wiki to link to different resources, videos on YouTube or other biostatistics pages or tutorials. And you can quickly put together a learning package just by using a wiki page. So students can have their own page so that the information will stay there and the next upcoming year will be able to see what the previous peers have been doing and get some inspiration from, from the previous uh, cohort. The topic I teach is in perception and cognition. And class would not have been possible without the technology. So without the video conferencing, so we had real-time conversations. And after having been on a sabbatical in Germany, I met Dr. Elena Andonova, who was my partner in this class. And she went back to her home country of Bulgaria, and we started talking about how to do some joint teaching in a meaningful cross-cultural way. So we used Bulgarian folk music, U.S. folk music, and so we, we showed that the unfamiliar complex meter of the Bulgarian music for the U.S. students led them to think that the music had lasted much longer than it had. And having these real-time discussions, you understand when they're understanding the points you're trying to make, whether you have to describe it again, and you don't get that through, you know, sort of the written medium, which um, previously would have been how you had to do it. At Tufts, the way we have the curriculum set out currently, it involves a weekly three-hour lecture. And hearing a professor drone on for one hour is kind of challenging from the days I remember as being a student. And to uh, deliver that lecture in an interesting manner, interactively with engagement, and make a connection with each and every student, which is 181 students in the current second year class, and do it for three hours, even with a couple of breaks, is a formidable challenge for an educator. So I wanted to have as many students present in the room, but keep them engaged. And that's when I discovered learning catalytics. And as you're giving your lecture, you can pause from the lecture and throw out a question electronically, deliver it to the class, and in live fashion, I see the question responses coming in on my screen. And before I go on to some new subject, I can address the mistakes made by the people who answered wrong, help clarify things, give further examples, and know very well as an educator that the point has now been made and I've got good understanding in the class. And then we move on. The most important uh, course in their experience will be up to them. But histology is at the core. I mean, these are, this is the structure of cells, tissues, and organs, and that's what all medicine is based upon. And we used to have labs, three-hour labs, and the students had a slide box with a hundred or more slides in it, and then they would, would, each lab, they would have to put the slide under the microscope and search for the, you know, the appropriate uh, images. So now, all of this information is on Tusk. They can access it 24-7. We've got thousands of the captured images that the students can look at and see without having to search around in a microscope slide. Tusk is a file cabinet. So if you know how to use a file cabinet and put file folders in a file cabinet, you know how to use Tusk. Here is what you would see if you put um, a cross-section of the esophagus, for example, um, on a microscope slide with the microscope. And then, in order to see at a higher magnification, you would have to turn the turret and rotate the nose piece so that you could bring a higher uh, magnification objective in. Here, what we can do is just zoom in and go from uh, very um, low magnification to very high magnifications to, to look around. So now the students have this virtual microscope that they're able to um, you know, mimic. Uh, they're getting the information before they come to class. They have an opportunity in class to, to review it, and then they get the review uh, questions, and then they get the review of the concepts and images.
One of the things that interests me about food policy is how people use data as part of their policy argument. And it's very hard for students to be critical assessors of some of that debate because the data are kind of opaque. So one of the things I try to do is empower students to be able to judge these data for themselves. One example is the Thrifty Food Plan is used by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as a benchmark for the SNAP program, formerly known as the Food Stamp Program. And one of the big public policy issues of the day is, should the SNAP benefit be higher or lower? And with students in class, we work through a spreadsheet, an interactive exercise that allows students to try out for themselves, what trade-offs would they have made between nutrition considerations and economic considerations? How do you participate in civic engagement in, in the United States as a citizen about the important food and agricultural policy debates of the day? The, these debates have been left to the experts too long, and I think a, a broader swath of input uh, is good for us all.